This is breaking news from Bloomberg. Hey, everybody. I just want to do a quick check on shares of Reddit. They are open. They are trading. And the stock is up just shy of 60%. At its highs today, was trading above almost $58 a share. So a 70% pop on this first day of trading. It's settled in, or it's not settling in. We still have some uh, ways to go. But right now, up about 59%, uh, $54 uh, and change here, if you will. So jumping after we know it priced at the top of its marketed range. Um, and this is coming day two. We've had two big tech uh, IP. POs that have all come out of the gate incredibly strong. And we know um, uh, Estera, right, the uh, semiconductor related uh, company, it's also trading higher in a second day of trade. So that brings me to Amy Orr, who covers IPOs here at Bloomberg. She's in our studio right now. Um, Amy, if you're if you're maybe one of the bankers or perhaps working uh, at Reddit and you see a 60 percent pop on, on day one of trading, how are you feeling? I mean, it's good, obviously, if you're a shareholder, but are you also thinking, wait, we could have raised more than $700 million in the IPO? So I just want to go back to the marketing bid. Um, I have to say, yeah. so A, Reddit is not raising all the money. So the money that it will probably get is around $550 million or so, because it's also some of the employees are selling. But also, this is the biggest marketing event. So they don't really have to go out. So essentially, for a lot of people, there's been concern about like, oh, there is a generation of Redditors. And then the younger people do not know it because the younger people are already into TikTok and other things. But this is going to introduce a lot more people to take because of the IPO because of the IPO but going to bankers so or, or just issuers in general so normally people will feel left out right leaving money on the table but we're in a totally not normal IPO environment Good right point. now so anything really anything up and having a pop to investors is great for everybody. Well, that's what I was wondering. How much of it is like, oh my god, there's another IPO finally versus wow, I really like this company. Well, it finally, it, it, it really depends on investors. And okay. I have to say the market is very concentrated in tech at the moment, um, not on individuals like individual other sectors like industrial healthcare. Like we haven't actually seen those uh, rebounded to the point where we've seen a whole slew of IPOs in those sectors as well. So it's really up to investors to decide for themselves whether they like it because the momentum is there or because the fundamentals are there. So at the end of the day, IPOs are buying into growth. Right. And growth is really about projection and whether you actually believe in the company. So right. everyone has different kind of viewpoint about that, right? And I, and I have to say that you throw AI kind of in the AI play in the data, like that certainly makes it a little bit more of an interesting story, Tim. Hey, it certainly does. Um, Mandeep, when you think about comps for this company, um, what's a fair comp? Well, Snap, Pinterest, uh, and Meta, I said, uh, you know, the fact that Meta is trading at such a premium to the smaller social media players, I thought that was uh, something How that was How is this trading against a, a Pinterest, for example? So Pinterest trades, for example, at about four times EV2 sales. Meta is close to eight times EV2 sales. And Reddit was uh, priced right in the middle there, $34 equated to six times EV2 sales. So that's why I well, think the pop gets now that closer. Now it's $52 yes. dollars a share, a little higher than that. Yeah, and, and which is why you pay for growth. And I think with Reddit accelerating growth in the past six months, it, it just makes a strong case that they should be at a premium multiple. I just want to remind everybody who's watching and listening around the Bloomberg universe that Reddit shares, they are definitely up in trading. Stock's up about 50, almost 55% here uh, in its first day of trade, trading above $52 a share. It is the fourth largest this year. Um, the biggest of those listings, though, that we've seen so far was the Amherst Sports one that we had in January. Ed, I want to go back to you because there you are in the heart of Silicon Valley, Reddit, a company <laughs> well-known in the Valley, been around for a long time. Has there been much buzz in conversations around this company like wow this could be like reddit's time i'm just curious what the conversations if they've even been happening Yes, specifically uh, last night, um, Sequoia, which is one of the biggest venture capital firms, held a really big AI event called AI Ascent. And they were talking about Reddit there. They had like 100 CEOs and founders from the biggest AI companies all in one room. But again, they, they went back to the point of the data licensing. And just like Mandeep said, and uh, Mandeep, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but I think you would be happy that I'm quoting you. You know, Mandeep says, I bet you that, that Reddit will go to the other LLM builders, big and small, and do a mm. deal. And I think that's the conversation that a lot of the kind of tech world is having out here, that, wow, Reddit's kind of got its story straight and got it right. And if they can do 200 million with Google, they'll probably be able to replicate that. And then the other part of it is I would just go back to, like, Reddit is a part of this town. 
you know, it was a Y Combinator startup in 2005. That's a you know very well known incubator here in the city. It sold in 2006 to Condé Nast, and it's kind of had this kind of strange and long journey. But it's still been a name in the world of technology that we talked about. Long, uh, Katie Greifeld should be here. She would back me up on this. But long before uh, Wall Street bets and, uh, bets and the meme stock frenzy, we did know about Reddit to some extent, right? So it, while I've been saying that the, the kind of global audience for Reddit might not be there yet, it is well known to those in the technology community at least. Yeah, at the same time, Ed, um, it is on a fully diluted basis, a valuation right now just shy of, of $10 billion. On yes, a, just shy. Just yeah. shy, but on in terms of market cap, right now about $8.2 billion. Um, talk to me a little bit about the what happened a few years ago when they raised money at a $10 billion valuation, because we're still not, you know, we're still just around that, that, that point two or three years later. Uh, so in 2021, in the last private round that they did, they had a $10 billion valuation. So they're not quite there yet. Um, you know, the cap table was probably quite complicated. Um, and I guess that you could ask yourself, well, are there people on that cap table who are either in or out of the money? But I think we talked about this a bit earlier that if you think about the last three or four years, there are a number of companies that are now public that chose to do down rounds. In other words, raise money at a lower valuation than the valuation of their previous round. And they did that to give themselves some upside, right? Um, you know, imagine if Reddit had retained that value uh, and uh, you know, we're now valuing it at 5 billion or even higher, 15 billion, but Reddit didn't have to go through that process. It's just the reality of the time and place that you're in. And you know, Amy will know the history of this, but you know, Reddit was gonna do this in 2021 and then it was gonna do it in 2022. And we've kind of been waiting a long time. And 2021 was this like massive US IPO year, particularly for tech, where they kind of missed the boat. So there is a part of it that's just like confidence and timing but the valuation is comparable right in this moment to where it was in that last private round. I have to say that actually it's very funny, Ed. Um, you mentioned the last uh, funding round. I'm because, a funny guy. Uh, <laughs> because in the perspectives, um, in you se are. for Series E and Series F, where um, Tencent, Conte Ness, and um, Sam Altman actually participated, yeah. uh, we were right. thinking like of all the people, the, right? Yeah, for the price range of thirty-one dollars to thirty-four dollars, like they're going to make a loss because the the average price was like thirty-seven or forty-two dollars. So like at fifty dollars right now so they're yes. all making money even the people who yeah. participated in the last round at a valuation of ten billion dollars pretty remarkable right it, it really it's is okay mandeep if you're if you're doing ad sales for reddit how do you go out there and convince a large marketing a, a large marketer uh to spend money with you versus with meta platforms which can which would tell you hey we know exactly who the next buyer of your product is going to be yeah, one of the trends that we are noticing with LLMs is the ad targeting will get better and better. And you've seen that with Meta's latest results. You is, said LLMs. Yes, LL, okay. uh, because, uh, you know, what LLMs give you is more personalized. LLMs remind us. Large language models. Thank you. And that's what Meta has uh, their own large language model called Llama. I mean, others are standardizing on GPT and Gemini uh, will probably show up in Apple. But uh, the point being that w you will see an expansion in search because of LLM. So y not only do you ask a query, you can ask a follow-up. And when you ask a follow-up, you give more information to the channel you're uh, asking the query, whether it's a chatbot or Reddit or any uh, Google search. And with a follow-up, you have the uh, you know proposition of showing even more targeted ad. So Reddit has that engagement in terms of the user base looking for user-generated content, where you know all that is original to Reddit. And if they can build a search huh. platform, the ad targeting can be huge, much better than any other platform. I just gotta say, I'm curious as Reddit users start to hear that, it just seems like if I was a Reddit user, I'm not, but it seems like it's a platform where they wouldn't love that. They think it's kind of their own little space that they go into. So I wonder if there's pushback going forward. Just to reset everybody, Reddit shares up in trading, they're now below $50 a share. So we've seen certainly a lot of volume, a lot of activity, stock still up 45% in its first day of trading the Reddit IPO. So again, 49 and change with us 
us. Ed Ledlow, co-host of Bloomberg Technology on Bloomberg TV, who spoke with the Reddit COO earlier today. Amy Orr in the house, equity capital markets reporter at Bloomberg News. And Mandeep Singh, also with us in studio, senior tech industry analyst at Bloomberg Intelligence. Tim, Tim we want to add another name to this roundtable. Yeah, because we have with us the person who wrote the book about Reddit that came out back in 2018. Back with us is Christine Legorio Chafkin, editor at large at Inc. Magazine, also the author of We Are the Nerds, The Birth and Tumultuous Life of Reddit, the Internet's Culture Laboratory. Uh, Christine, by the way, we should note if her last name sounds familiar, it's because she's the wife of Bloomberg Businessweek's Max Chafkin. She was at the New York Stock Exchange a little earlier today, uh, right now joining us uh, from her office in New York City. Christine, welcome back to Bloomberg Businessweek. Um, a day like today, after writing a book about the history of Reddit, what is Reddit today versus Reddit in its early years? Wow, yeah, it's a very, very different company, right? I mean, you're talking about the viability of selling advertising. You're talking about selling, um, you know, language, uh, two large language learning models uh, and selling their basically AI companies being a big customer. That was unheard of 10 years ago. It was also unheard of for Reddit to really be a mainstream news source um, 10 years ago. It was really a, a kind of dark corner of the internet at that point with a lot of pornography, a lot of um, a lot of hate speech. And um, it's been a remarkable journey that it's been through to kind of clean up that um, make its content modern um, content moderation modern. And it's become sort of a model for that. Well, and such a, it's come a, a long way, it sounds. Uh, take us to the uh, exchange earlier today. You were down there. Uh, tell us about Stuff Snoo and what else <laughs> the activity was at the New York Stock Exchange as it got ready yeah. to make its debut. You know, I walked into the lobby of the stock exchange, and there's just a, a stuffed uh, snoo, um, which is the a little round alien that is the company's avatar or mascot. Um, and I saw a, a security guard sort of <laughs> coo at it, which was very cute. But then um, ringing the bell on the floor um, at 9.30 a.m. was not CEO Steve Huffman. It was a human, I assume, in a like large stuffed snoo suit, um, <laughs> which I think, you know, was sort of meant to stand for every man. Not, not a dark not place anymore, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was very cute, you know, I mean, <laughs> so so I think they're, they're trying to appeal to their core audience as well as investors, right? They need to keep their users happy at the same time as they've gained a lot more shareholders. Hey, talk to us a little bit about that balance, Christine, because, you know, it's not necessarily Reddit's not necessarily a place, um, you know, look, there's a niche for everything on Reddit, I think it's fair to say. But the attitude of, of the users is not certainly one of 100 percent supportive of this company going this route. So how does how does Reddit uh, walk that line and, and, and keep that balance? Yeah, no, absolutely. Users um, are, are quite skeptical. There are you know hundreds, thousands of posts on the site from users expressing skepticism. Oh, what happens when Reddit needs to make more money? Does it start charging us? Does it start, you know, d does the selling of the content start to become something that inhibits more speech on the site? Um, you know, there's there's a lot of skepticism, and it is very important for for Steve Hoffman and the other executives at Reddit to listen to those sentiments and keep users happy. Um, he did say in an almost AMA earlier this week that you know he does listen to users and that site revolts such as the one that happened last summer are very valuable to him um, and and are a learning opportunity because you know the users are the bread and butter. They need to keep growing those users to keep growing those advertising money. Advertising is still their primary. And they said in the S1, they're their really only way of making money right now. So it is it's very, very important. He really wants to get over a billion users and they need to keep the site very, very friendly and growing um, and avoid those sort of user revolts in the future. Well, that's what I was trying to get to earlier with um, Ed Ludlow. I want to go back to you. We're listening to Christine. But this whole idea of kind of what this uh, this site has been like, and I know they've cleaned up some stuff, but I do wonder, like, what is that balance of bringing in advertisers? Mandeep earlier talked about their already bloated cost structure that they maybe need to work on that, but also they need to raise their user base. I mean, there's a lot of things that they're going to be juggling now as a publicly held company. The notes was published 2018, I think I'm right in saying, but that that's like a really interesting year because that was the year that Jen Wong um, joined, right? And, and I'm sorry to keep going back to her. It's not just that I interviewed her earlier, but like, 
I, I think a lot of people would credit Gen Wong with, with operationalizing Reddit and making it into a proper business. And by the way, she's like a really significant shareholder, more than 2 million of the shares outstanding more than Steve Huffman as it stands, because he has a complicated comp package. And, and I just wondered uh, if you could reflect on what you think the tipping point was um, in, in Reddit growing up as a company a little bit, because it was so influenced by the community, right? You know, the moderators moderate. Christine, come on in on that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I mean, I do think that there was this really interesting moment when, do you remember back when Ellen Powell was briefly CEO? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and she was she, interim though, right? That was on an interim yeah, basis. She, I think everyone intended for it to last and she, um, you know, literally oh. got harassed out of the role um, by users. But what she did this very important thing is she basically isolated and cut off or started to cut off five different communities that were just full of hate speech on Reddit. And it was super controversial at the time. And it has since over the past decade become a thing that Reddit does all of the time. You know, Reddit now has a whole set of rules and a whole different structure of moderators that was influenced by that very first step that you know back then researchers found that just eliminating those five communities had a really interesting trickle down and eliminated it, it slowed hate speech throughout the entire site i mean that was i think this turning point i think hiring a more advanced sales force hiring jen were also very important you know steps for the company um but it's it's still you know it's still a work in progress and any site that relies on a community of unpaid moderators, you know, like Reddit does, um, it's, it's going to always be a battle, right? Reddit right. only has, what, some thousand employees? <laughs> hey, listen, everybody, just a quick check. Um, our roundtable discussion will continue in a moment, but Reddit shares still up about 46% here in the session at their highs. They were almost $58 a share. That was a 70% gain on its first day of trading. Still up, as I said, 46%. The stock closing, I mean, the stock trading, forgive me, uh, just under $50 a share. So still um, quite a pop. Amy Orr is still with us here at Bloomberg News, watches the IPO market. I mean, safe to say we still have, what, a couple of hours to go before we wrap up this trading day. But right now it looks like a, a pretty successful IPO. Looks like it. And I'm <laughs> sure that a lot of bankers are really happy about it because given that over the weekend, it was the message was kind of like confusing because it was four to five times book. When people were seeing like four to five times book, it was not a good book just generally. And there was talk about like now um, coming into the beginning of the week and then especially just before pricing, it, the, the book cover was more than 13 times cover. So essentially there's a, a great ramp up and especially from long only funds. And that's why, yeah, it's been holding up pretty well. You see the momentum. All right. Um, as we said, uh, we're talking with Christine Ligorio Chafkin, wrote a book about uh, Reddit. Uh, we are the nerds, the birth and tumultuous life of Reddit, the Internet's culture laboratory. Also still with us is our own Ed Ludlow, co-host of Bloomberg Technology, and Amy Orr, who watches the IPO market here uh, at Bloomberg. Um, Christine, I want to go back to you. As you think about this company, you know, what it's in it. You know, they're coming public in a market where there's some really big players out there. And I get the AI data play, and that could be a lot of potential for them. But what do you see as their biggest challenges going forward, having done this deep dive in your book into the company and into its history? Yeah, I think this transition into into AI is going to be challenging, um, both as a perception um, and and in reality and a sales reality. Um, but but let me just say that I, Steve told me I did speak to Steve earlier today as well, and he told me something really interesting, was, which was that you know this long road that they've had to IPO, they filed first in twenty twenty one. You're talking about Steve Huffman, um, the CEO of the company. Yeah, yeah I spoke to Steve Huffman earlier this morning, and you know he said basically they've been doing earnings calls since then. They did mm. five different um, rounds of meetings with investors before they even did their roadshow. So by the time they got to the roadshow, he said like everyone sort of knew the business so well and didn't have as many questions as he expected, which, you know, if you know Reddit, you know, Reddit requires some explanation. So um, I thought that was a kind of interesting detail. But I, I think that the AI thing is very interesting and it's a challenge, but it's also, I mean, as AI starts to shift the internet and the way we interact with search, I have been noticing more of my peers are searching, say, Google with the word reddit.com in it so that they get a real human response to their query instead of getting an AI generated response. Oh, so I think we can stand to benefit from the, the growth of AI, um, not just from a Salesforce angle. Because you're arguing, Christine, that we could be desiring something that is more human in a world that is dominated uh, increasingly by answers generated by AI? 
Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's talk a little more because Ed Ludlow uh, spoke earlier uh, uh, to Jen Wong, the COO of Reddit, all about the way that Reddit could use AI uh, as a, a business model in terms of training, using its content to train AI models. Uh, Christine, was that even in the research that you did for your book, which again was published in 2018, was that even on the radar of folks at Reddit back then? AI, gosh, I, I do not, I do not think <laughs> it's nothing that I talked with them about. I do have to say, I mean, at that time, Sam Altman was still on the board of Reddit, um, but he was, and he had founded ChatGPT, but he was not like, uh, you know, in the press about it yet, um, and it was not working on it full full time yet. So no, it's something mm -hmm. we really discussed. All right, guys, just got about a minute and a half left here. I want to go round robin as we uh, get ready to just wrap up this hour here. Amy uh, or watching this IPO, um, thirty seconds here on what you're thinking. I think Reddit went public at the right time for the company. It might talk, it might have took it um, eighteen years for it, but then it became profitable in the fourth quarter, and they get, that gave investors a lot of confidence. What do they always say? It's always about timing, <laughs> right place, right time. Ed Ludlow, what are you thinking? We're going to continue, obviously. The coverage here on Reddit right. and, and broaden out here. But what are you thinking here? You've been following this one very closely. Yeah, for the last six months to two years, everyone has an AI story. And I just feel like Reddit got their AI story right and at the right time. And it answered a lot of questions and concerns that people had about the legacy advertising. I call it legacy is pretty much brand new, but advertising business. And so let's see where they trade in a year's time. That's the fun of the markets. That's hey, so true. Christine, just a 30 second, last 30 seconds to you. The book is called We Are the Nerds, The Birth and Tumultuous Life of Reddit, the Internet's Culture Laboratory. Where are we in Reddit's life now? Yeah, we are entering a new chapter of Reddit's life. Steve Huffman this morning told me he's very excited to and and honored to be a public company now. He said that, you know, looking back to other great public companies, you don't even remember their time as a private company. The iPhone was not made by a private company. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and and so he's, he's excited for the next chapter. I think that w there's a lot to watch in terms of this stock too. Um, watch to see if anyone takes out money. Right. Watch to see who, you know, yeah. who is, um, you know, who is, who's buying. Okay. Um, their AI message was at the right Got time it. and is going to be an interesting component to watch. Got to wrap. Uh, thank you so much. Amy Orr, Ed Ludlow, and Christine Legorio Chafkin. Thank you so much. Shares of Reddit, folks, up 50%, stock closing above $50 a share. Carol Master, Tim Stenovic, this is Bloomberg.